Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson nine of the simple series of my Z80 assembly tutorials. This time we're going to be looking at how to do simple bitmaps on the Game Boy by using the tile map to simulate sort of almost sprite graphics. No, technically they're not, but I think if you're a beginner, the tile bitmaps, just using tiles to create graphics, is going to be easier for you because you're not going to have to worry about the limitations of sprites, the number of sprites on a screen. And if you're really just a beginner, you know, you, I think that should be plenty for you to get started. Most of us programmers started in BASIC on systems like the Spectrum and the Amstrad CPC, and we were probably using just character blocks. So that's going to be far more limited than the tiles. And once you've got your had tiles and you're happy with them and you understand them, you'll be able to move on to sprites and things later on anyway. So we're going to look at tiles on the Game Boy. But the first thing, if you're really not familiar with Game Boy programming, maybe this is the first time you've looked at it, just bear in mind, this is part of my Z80 tutorials, but the Game Boy isn't a Z80, it's a GB Z80, it's missing some commands that won't affect our code today. But as I say, if, if you're not familiar with the system, that's something you really need to understand before it catches you out. So that's just one for you to bear in mind. So, first things first, let's actually see the example we're going to be looking at today running so you can see that we can actually make it do something. So we're not doing very much for this first example. We've just got a single smiley face character here. And you can see we've even got the Nintendo logo hanging around here after the boot up of the machine. So very, very simple. OK, well, let's take a look at the code for that. Now, the first thing is we need a header for our cartridge here. We've got a very generic header here. We've got some initialization of the um, interrupt handlers so that if interrupts fire and things, they'll just return. We've got the mandatory header here. Now, one important thing to understand is that the checksum here is not correct. This needs to be correct for certain emulators to run it. Um, Vir Virtual Boy Advance won't require it, but BGB will. Now, I've got a separate program that I'm running as part of my batch file that's actually patching the header in. If you need to need understand how to do that kind of thing, please see my Hello World example. But as I say, I I'm not going to go over all of that again today. Now, the start of the proper code is just here. So the first thing we're doing is we're turning off interrupts. We've got a proper stack pointer set up. And then we're initializing the tile map. We're resetting the scroll options. These are controlled by FF42 and FF43 for the Y and X positions of the scroll map. So we're setting them both to zero to clear everything out. Then what we're doing is we're waiting for the LCD to be in a position that we can turn it off. So we're reading in from FF44, which is the current line that's being drawn. And we wait for it to get to 145. When it does, we turn off the screen by resetting bit 7 of FF40, the memory address FF40. At this point, we're now ready to start sending data to our hardware to define the new tiles. So we've got a destination here. Now, the tile bitmap data, the patterns of the tiles, starts at hexadecimal 8000. And we want to set tile number 128. That, the reason for 128 is because this example was designed to be able to work with a font that would be from 0 to 96 tiles. So 128 was out of the way. Now, each tile is eight lines tall and it's two bytes per line. So each tile is 16 bytes in total. So to calculate the offset of tile number 128, we do 128 times 16 because 16 bytes per tile. And then the start of the tile pattern data, 8,000. And that's the address we want to write to. So that's what our calculation is doing there. The source data is called sprite data. You can see it all the way down here. And this is in a format known as bit planes. Effectively, a bit plane is a single byte contains one of the bits of eight consecutive pixels. So all of the bit zeros of eight pixels are here, and all the bit ones are here. Now, a two-bit image is capable of four colors, which is what the Game Boy is capable of. So if both of these are zero, like here, then the color will be zero. If there's a one here and a zero in the matching place here, then the color will be one. If there's a one here and a zero here, the color will be two. And if there's a one in both cases, like here, let me get to that one, then the color will be three. So it, they, they combine together to make the colors. Now, if you need to make valid data, for your Game Boy, you can go here in my Acrosprite editor, which is free and open source. You can go to Game Boy, Game Boy, File, Save Raw Bitmap, and it will actually break up even a larger image like this, and it will split it up into 8x8 eight eight tiles, and we'll see that later. And so you could use that bitmap data here instead of just doing it by hand here like I've done. And um, the, it's important for me to also say that although we're only looking at tiles today, the format of tiles and sprites is the same in the bitmap terms. So if you start off with 8x8 eight eight tiles and then you wanted to work with 8x8 eight eight sprites or you were using four tiles together to make a 16x16 16 16 tile map 
graphic and then you wanted to convert that to a 16 by 16 sprite later again you could do so as i say i think this is a great place for you to just get started with getting a few things on the screen and learning about programming so we're using this define tiles function to actually do the work of transferring that data to the right position it first calls a command called lcd wait this we're going to see a lot of it's making sure the lcd is actually ready to receive data what it does is it reads in from ff41 it checks this bit here if the bit is zero then we're okay if it's not then we're not okay and so what it does is it waits until that bit is zero and then it will return so we have to call this before we do any commands on our graphics memory otherwise we could have problems and things won't work it will be random and it will be very confusing so we're waiting for our lcd there we're reading in a byte from hl writing it to DE and we're just repeating around. Now this is effectively an LDIR command, but LDIR is one of the commands that's missing from the GBZ80. So we have to simulate it and that's what we're doing here. So that has transferred our pattern data for our smiley face into video RAM, but it's still not visible. Next, what we're doing is we're defining the palette. Now all of the example code you're seeing today will work on the Game Boy or the Game Boy Color. I'll just show you that, I didn't demonstrate that, did I? So there's the Game Boy Color version. And one of the places that it's different is the defining of the palette. On the black and white Game Boy, we only have a black and white palette, unsurprisingly. And it's defined, the four colors are defined by two bits per color. So we can set 1-1, one, one, which will set both of the color to maximum darkness, or 0-0, zero, zero, which will set it to maximum lightness. Now, there are three things that we can set the palette of. The background, the sprites 1, which is known as objects and sprites 2, which is the alternate color for sprites. I don't know if you've ever seen a Game Boy game on the Game Boy Color. Even though it's a black and white Game Boy game, the sprites will sometimes be in a different color, and that's because there were two palettes definable for the sprites, and I think that's for things like, you know, if Mario gets hit, sometimes he flashes just to show he's vulnerable, and he'll sort of invert or something. And by having a second palette option to flip in for the, for the sprite, you could make the sprite a different color for a dark level or for, as I say, if the player's hit or something. So that's an option that's worth bearing in mind. And what I'm doing in this example is I'm setting the inverted option for object palette one, sprite palette one, to sprite palette zero here. Now the Game Boy Color palette's very, very different. What we're doing here is, again, we're using LCD weight. We have to write our byte data into FF68 to select a address and FF69 to actually set the data for that address. Now this is the format of the palettes here. These are four colors here. Each one takes two bytes, so there's two addresses per color, and there's up to eight palettes, so that's another thing we all want to bear in mind. So here's the palettes. We've got five bits for red, five bits for green, five bits for blue, and that will define one color. So we're defining four colors here, and we're defining the background as blue, as you can see there. Okay. So now we've defined our palette and we've defined our tile pattern, so we're ready to turn the screen back on. So we set bit 7 of FF40 again, which is the one we reset before to turn the screen off. And now we can actually start working. So we're going to select position 5,5 and we're going to use this command get VDP screen pods, which will calculate the correct memory location of the tile that we want to set. Now the width of the tile map is 32 tiles and each tile has a single byte. Now the Game Boy Color has two bytes, but they're actually in different banks, so it's still only one byte in actual memory addresses. So to calculate the address of the tile we want to change, if BC contains an XY position, we multiply Y by 32, we add X, and then we add that to the base of the tile map, which is 9800. Now, that's what we're doing here. We've got no multiply command, so what we're doing is we're bit shifting, and we're bit shifting the Y position right three times, moving it into the 32 valued bit and that will effectively multiply it by 32. If you don't understand this, just use this code as is, it will work fine. Then what we're doing is we're adding in the X position and saving the low byte to L. The high byte will almost be correct, but all we need to do now is add the base address here, 98, because 9800, of course we don't need to add zero to the low byte, that would make no sense at all. So this has now selected the correct destination address in HL here. So we're now ready to actually write the tile number we want to set to the screen. So HL contains the correct destination address in the tile map. And all we're doing is writing a 128 to select that tile number 128 that we defined as the smiley face. The, the tile will now be visible on the screen. And the only thing we're doing now is we're doing an extra bit of code to set the palette in the Game Boy Color. 
Now we, we don't actually need to do this, this depends on the settings, but we can do, and if we set the palette to a, a palette that's not properly defined, you can see we've now just got a white block because we're now using palette one and we haven't actually defined palette one. We could do, if we just change this to a one here, we're, we're defining eight bytes per palette, so we're multiplying by eight here, but if we put a one here, you can see now the background's white and our smiley face is back to its proper colors. So it's just important that our palette we select here is correct. Now the way we page in the Game Boy Color special memory is using uh, FF4F and we load a one into memory address FF4F and that will actually turn on the extra RAM and then in the exact same position as the tile number was is now the extra options and the, the first one of those options is the palette. The other bits do allow for flipping and things but we're not going to look at that today. And then we just turn it off by writing a zero back to FF4F and that will turn off the Game Boy Color memory. And that's all there is to it. Pretty straightforward, really. Okay, so that's our simple example. But we do have a slightly more impressive one. Let's have a look at it. So now you can see we've got the large Chibiko character here, which you should recognize because we saw it just here. And of course, I did export that with AccuSprite Editor. So let's have a look at how we're doing this one. Now, the first thing is we're defining an extra palette here. And the palette you can see is just here. This is the Chibiko palette, black for the background, then purple, then cyan, then white. So four colors there for this for the first palette. And we are turning on the Game Boy Extras and then setting palette one just here to set the Chibiko character. But because we're now having to do more than just a single tile, because we're having to set a grid of effectively six by six tiles, we've got a new command to do this. So we've got our defined tiles as before, our set palette as before. But it's this fill area with tiles function that's doing the job. We've got a XY position here. We've got a width and a height. We've got a first tile number. And then fill area with tiles is going to fill a grid area with consecutive tiles going across the screen first and then down. Now, this is relating to AccuSprite Editor because AccuSprite Editor is breaking this up into 8x8 tiles. You can see the tiles with this colored overlay here. And each of the characters blocks will be actually split up according to that and will be exported in the file correctly. So if you use this export option, so Z80, Game Boy, File, Save or Bitmap, it will actually split it up into the 8x8 chunks, provided you go across the screen and then down. If you went the other way, it'd be all backwards. So the first thing we're doing here is we are just working out the end position for the X and Y coordinate. So the last X coordinate we need to fill and the last Y line that we need before we're finished. So we're just storing those in some memory defined addresses here. We're using two bytes of memory here and we're calling them ZIXH and ZIXL. Now, if we were on a real Z80, we'd use the real registers IXH and L, but the GBZ80 doesn't have IX and IY, so they're not available to us. So we're using memory to simulate those. Okay, we're using get VDP screen post to kind of calculate the start of a line. And then we are waiting for the LCD and then we're loading in from E, which is our tile number, and we're writing to HL here. We're using a special Game Boy command called LDI, which means load and increment. What it does is it will take A into HL as normal, but then it will increase HL by one. And we could actually just replace this with LB HL and then INC HL. It would be the same, but LDI is faster. It's a Game Boy, it's a Game Boy special command. The Z80 doesn't have that usually. Now, in this case, we on the color version, we need to do a little bit more. Again, we need to page in the Game Boy Color registers with memory address FF4F, and then we need to write the palette number to the same address, and that's why we're not using LDI here, because we need HL to be the same, but we do need to change it at some point, so we've got the LDI here instead. Once we've done a single block, we then increase the DE, which is, of course, our tile number. We then increase B, and we see if the X position we are currently drawing to is the X position we calculated to be the end of the line. If it's not, we just repeat. If it is, then we increase the Y position and then check if we've reached the end of the Y line. And once we have, of course, we've then finished drawing our character. So this is a simple function that can get a larger character to the screen. Now, one thing that's important to understand with the Game Boy, the classic Game Boy is only capable of a maximum of 256 tiles, and that's not enough tiles to fill the entire screen with unique tiles. So don't get any clever ideas that you're going to create a tile map, this, a tile bitmap here that's the size of the entire Game Boy screen because the Game Boy can't do that. Now, the Game Boy Color can because the Game Boy Color has an extra one bit of tile numbers in that extra bank of memory. But my example code here won't be able to do that for you. You could modify it to take one bit of 
that to take the low bit of D and or it in, you could certainly do that. But the example I'm showing you here hasn't been programmed to do that. So just bear that in mind. You know, that could be maybe a challenge for you. But anyway, okay, so that's what we're going to be covering on the Game Boy for today. I think we've had a look at some nice stuff here. As I say, if you're look just starting out with your Game Boy programming, you want to get some graphics to the screen, this should be a good starting point for you. We're going to be coming back to this in the Simple Series later. We're going to look at adding some joystick controls and move that smiley around the screen. So please like and subscribe if you want to see more Game Boy programming. I hope this has been useful for you. Thanks for watching today, and goodbye. If you enjoyed today's video, please check out my new YouTube channel known as TV Ackerman's Live. This is going to be a live streaming channel, and it's going to be um, some more casual content. It will be me streaming some of my programming sessions, me playing games and chatting along. Um, I'm going to try and really do a lot of technical content in there, try and explain things as I'm playing games, you know, talking about the hardware or while I'm programming. And also I'm going to try and interact with the chat a lot. So if you really enjoyed today's lesson, then maybe you want more content and that will give it you. Equally, if you didn't enjoy today's lesson, if it was too hard for you, if you found it so confusing and you want something a bit lighter hearted, then it might be interesting to you as well. Though I guess you've probably already clicked off if you didn't enjoy it because 95% of my viewers give up after about two minutes. But either way, thanks for watching and goodbye.